How you doing guys and welcome to a new video. For those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Joshua Daniel George, a social media marketer and online coach. And this video is basically a replay of one of our live coaching calls where we actually had someone from the Consult X program, so my higher tier program, come in to Lifestyle Design Mastery, my beginner program, just to share their experiences with the program and with running and scaling an agency in general. So Lifestyle Design Mastery is a program that teaches you guys how to get started with digital marketing and how to start your own advertising agency. Consultex is for existing agency owners that want systems and processes to actually scale their agency to the next level. So. Sit back, relax, take notes, and enjoy the video. For those of you that are interested in either of the two programs, I will leave my calendar link uh, in the first comment of this, um, you know, of this video. And you know, what we can do is we can schedule a quick call to see, you know, if you are right fit for either of the programs, which program, and to see, you know, if we can help you scale your agency or start your agency and get that agency to the next level. Right, yeah, that's a wild haircut, man. Yeah, got the curls back in town. <laughs> I'm not used to. I'm used to the man bun. Yeah, today was a uh, was the day I had time to do it. So <laughs> <laughs> fair enough, man. Benzema, I'm guessing that's Kareem, right? He's on mute. Feel free to unmute yourself or just put it in the chat. I think it's Kareem. Uh, just wait for the rest to show up. How's your day been, uh, Rajen? Yeah, it's been great. Um... Good results, so that's always uh, nice after the weekend. Uh, close to new client also, so that's perfect. Ethan, what niche? Uh, children, uh, yeah, feeding. <laughs> children feeding, okay, that's random. Well, like, so, any restrictions with that? No, not really. You you can't say specific health benefits. Yeah, but, uh, and some type of women don't can't uh can't see the ads like uh some pregnant women with two, two months pregnant they can't see some items but um so okay. interesting man how did you how did you get this client just manual outreach or no no they, they uh came to me they are part of the h and h group the health and happiness uh they are backed by uh by a Hong Kong uh, firm, so they are like also, okay. uh, how do you call it in English? Um, Burst yeah. noteerd. Um, yes, yeah, so like an uh, uh, good question, man. Like public, <laughs> tip on my tongue. Public, um, public, public, let's Google it. So it's a, just a publicly traded, publicly yeah. traded company. Yeah, right? publicly yeah. traded. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so um, also getting another client with them. So that's two. Nice. So yeah, that's just one grade of uh, <laughs> network. <laughs> yeah, man, good stuff. Yeah, basically, um, those that don't know Rajen, we'll uh, introduce him in just a second. We're just slowly waiting for people to join the group. Um, Bo, Joel, welcome, man. Hey, man. How are you? Not bad, mate. How about yourself? Yeah, good. Thanks, mate. I'm mostly not in the office. No, no. At home. Waking from home again, are we? Yeah. No, I, think I left about three o'clock today. So, and then obviously you sent me this about the call. I thought I can't miss another one. Yeah. No. Nah, <laughs> yeah. So, um, Regen is actually in the Consult X program, and to be fair, from minute one, Regen, you absolutely crushed it. Um, just you took action right away. You implemented a lot of stuff that we talked, but also did your own thing. You know, you very proactive with testing and, and, and working on the agency as well as your other projects on the side. So I thought it would be a good opportunity to um, share with, with this group, you know, how you've been able to scale up so quickly um, and how you fit it all in as well, man. I know you're doing a lot of things, um, <laughs> subtly done the 75 hard challenge as well, like while scaling the agency as if it was not on each time I check in, come stories, you're, you've already been up like for three hours, been the gym, <laughs> done God knows what. So um, yeah, let's just start at the beginning, man. Feel free to introduce yourself and explain like what you do. Yeah. So thanks for the, the introduction. <laughs> nice words. Um, so yeah, guys, I'm Rajen. I'm 24 years old right now. Um, just got uh, 24 years old in November. So not that uh, old. <laughs> 
but uh sort to say i was always um yeah like early with things uh, i graduated from uh, my hbo it's like the bachelor of business at, in administration but yeah that paper just isn't worth anything it's worth shit um it's my most expensive paper in uh the whole <laughs> in all my closet for example so um i started my agency in 2020 um and i started actually in the hotel niche so i wanted to run advertising for hotels but then COVID, so that completely plan like two three months of doing research and calling people i thought like well not not a good time right now so then i changed uh, for, well not really changed i went to uh <laughs> to like how do you get yeah, uh, like a bottle uh a drink and then i got to meet a guy and he was like yo uh, i'm having an e-commerce store can you run my ads and then I was like, all right let's do that so then i switched to e-commerce and so I had my first client in Ecom uh, for like 2020 in September. Then lost the client in December because I didn't get the results. And that was the first notice I thought like, okay, I need to get really, really fucking good in Facebook advertising. Otherwise, this will be like a repeat pattern because clients in and they'll leave you as soon as possible uh, because you don't get the results. That's when I started to get some more advertising coaching. And in December, I got two other clients, three maybe. And from, yeah, this year, I started like 2K per month. And two, three months ago, I scaled it to 20K per month. So uh, it went crazy fast. Uh, first time I scaled my agency in March everything went crumbling down together <laughs> like all the bits and pieces i thought like oh, i had some systems and structures in place yeah it all came falling down and yeah two months later i went to joshua and i said like okay <laughs> i need some structure i need some systems and that's when i joined consult x uh because yeah i wasn't really a beginner anymore but i just needed some extra experience in the yeah, systems also, and also Facebook ads. And well, Urban and Josh are just perfect for that. So that's kind of my agency journey in a nutshell for this year. I've also have a course in Facebook ads and how to scale your own agency to 10K per month, uh, but also how you can scale clients their ads to 10K per month. So uh, yeah, it's been really busy. Every day I wake up at 5 a.m. Uh, to start reading, working out, um, do a course then at nine o'clock go to work uh, do the ads and then seven at yeah around seven eight p.m read a book again and then nine p.m uh, it's almost bedtime or well nine p.m 10 p.m it's uh, kind of yeah what the what the day brings so that's me <laughs> yeah no, that's good stuff man i like that so there's two things that um you touched upon there, which I thought were interesting. First one being the structure of the agency and how you were able to, you know, still scale your agency with basically wrong structures and processes, but it just came crumbling down, which is basically the exact same as what I had. The very first time I scaled to 8K a month, which was technically six figures. Um, a month later, all the clients left because there was no structure in place. I was just focusing heavily on the outreach and just completely disregarded actually getting results from clients. Um, and then the second thing you mentioned as well is actually, you know, getting the results for the clients. So for the first, um, so just to touch on that third point, the structure, what changed from the first time so he skilled the agency from the second time? Are you guys all still here or is this is it frozen? Uh, you there? Oh, no, no, you're good. I'm good. Oh, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> did, did you guys, did you get my question, Rajen? Uh, what was the difference between the first time scaling and the second time, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's the one. Yeah. yeah. So the first time <laughs> it was also something to do with like, just take on everyone, like all the clients you can get, um, doesn't necessarily like, um, yeah, 
look after what is a good deal or what's not a good deal. A client is a client. If they pay me, it's good. So the struggle there was that the advertising budgets were always lower than my service fee because I was holding food by, so food by stickers, Hill Nederlands. Um, I held in firm ground, like um, 1K service fee or 1.2 service fee, 1.2K service fee per month. And the ad spend doesn't matter. I will magically happen. Uh, let it happen to get a ROAS of eight, nine. Well, that was like a harsh reality. Doesn't work that way. And then, yeah, sort of say I scaled also to 7K. So the first time, uh, not 8K, but seven. And then the client started leaving because, yeah, I couldn't get the results. And the service fee were too high. The ad spends were too low. Um, also, I didn't have a proper, like, giving them the opportunity to get on a call with me. Uh, like, there was, like, nothing in place so they can book a call with me so I can keep them in the loop, uh, tell them what's, uh, what's going on in the ad account. Um, also... I hadn't done any monthly reporting. So I said like, oh, I do monthly reports, but they were just not there because I was heavily focused on outreach <laughs> inside the ad manager, trying to get this thing happen. Um, and also I took a lot of things like email marketing, conversion optimization, uh, coding on the website, email, mar of, uh, email flows. And every time I did that, it was like the ads were doing all right, very, really great. Uh, so really great. But then the moment they asked like, hey, how's the emails going? Then I was like, uh, yeah, we, I, I really didn't do it, but the ads are great. And then they always like, yeah, but you said you were going to do the email. So that's when I noticed like, okay, you really need to get focused on only one thing. Really get really good on that because otherwise you still keep getting that, um, yeah over promise and under deliver thing and it really backfired me uh a couple months ago because also in my state of mind i was like really happy and then we were on the call and they just yeah pushed me back to the ground like no you didn't do your work and i was like whoa we got like 5k per month 10k per month you have never done this any before and then you're still getting on those little things like an emails newsletter. I hate emails newsletters, but yeah, I said I was going to do that. So for also agreements, uh, invoicing, um, like just software, <laughs> I hadn't had anything in place. Like it was all, um, yeah, just uh, <laughs> a total mess. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's so interesting, man, to hear this because like, the very first time I did the exact same, I made the exact same mistakes. Um, that was back when I was still business partners with Bradley Riley. It was so focused on just getting the money and just getting, it was so short term. Like we were just focused on, okay, just get the retainer in no matter what. Um, and technically it did work in the short term. We did, you know, scale to 8K, which is the first time I'd ever done that. Um, and, you know, it, it just goes to show like you can't actually still scale an agency for one month you know with a shit service delivery just on your sales skills and the outreach etc but if you want to build a long-term business you know if you want to still be here in a year's time with your agency you can't do that you can't just uh, just promise the client the world and just let the client leave you know a month later because you weren't able to deliver and um funny you should mention that as well about the small little things even though it's not part of like it's not the agreed service you do it extra and then they'll you know they'll get you on that little bit extra each time we've had a client where they were not doing well and you you want to go the extra mile for these clients right so let's say there's a client like one of our clients they sell they sold um hot sauces so like salsas etc um and they sold that on farmers markets they were doing very well you know in terms of the offline sales um, they did like, I think it was like 120K in three months just by selling on these, these farmer's markets. Uh, but the website was non-existent. They just had this, they built the website on, on, um, on GoDaddy, which I didn't even know was possible. I just thought you can host a domain in GoDaddy. I didn't know you could actually build a store on it. Um, so we said, okay, well, let's, let's build it on Shopify. We'll do it. We'll build it on Shopify for you. 
no problem, this and that. Um, and, you know, it, it, we still struggled to get results if, because there was not a product market fit. These, the people that bought these salsas and hot sauces, these are not people that will buy online generally. You know, they will buy from farmer's markets. That's why they did so well. They had that product market fit offline, but online they just couldn't replicate it. And then we started getting complaints about the store because they didn't like the look of it. They thought the images we used were, because we, they, they had really bad, they, we'd ask them for images. And they'll send us screenshots of images so you could still see like the iphone uh you know like with the, with the whatsapp at the bottom and stuff like that <laughs> so we went on unsplash and pexels and you know got like really high quality non-copyright images and then they'll complain say no that, that 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 isn't our image that's not the the, the look of the brand etc um you know we want this really like small family friendly you know family run business type feel not this you know very much uh you know very aesthetically high-end brand feel because that was not them so they they basically complained and left because they were not uh they, they, they were not happy with the shopify store etc when that wasn't even our service we just offered that extra um and i've noticed that quite a few times with lower ticket clients if you go the ex, they don't fit your model. So you offer Facebook ads as a service, or you know Google ads, or whatever it is that you guys offer. You offer something as a service because they are low ticket. You can't just offer your own service because they need extra work. And then when you offer the extra work, that's when stuff goes downhill. So if it doesn't fit, it's like the what's the way when you try and put like a, a, a square peg in a round hole. You know when the puzzle piece doesn't actually fit. You'll, it will, you'll, you can basically tell right away that the client will leave sooner rather than later. Even if you go the extra mile, because it's not a right fit, um, you know, it will not work. Whereas if you get a high ticket client that's got everything up and running, you know, they already have everything set up uh, in the way you want it to be set up, it will be less work for you. You can charge a higher retainer and you'll notice that'll be much easier to get results as well because it's, it's a proven concept. You know, it's, like I, I always say, help winners win more. If the stores are the existing and already doing well, just help them go the extra mile rather than trying to help these businesses that are not yet at that point yet where they can even afford an agency. But anyway, um, on to the second point, Regen. You mentioned that the results of Facebook ads. Um, how did that go? Like, what, what, what made you decide to actually go you know, uh, into you know, really focus on getting results? Do you have a media buyer? Do you run them yourself, et cetera? Can you walk us through that? Um, yeah. So what I didn't know, uh, mentioned in, the, in the, my introduction, we I, I used to be a chief editor for an online magazine. Uh, that's, there's where I got in contact with Facebook ads and also my copywriting. Um, we used to do like campaigns for Suzuki, Kia and Philips. So the big brands. And I knew like, okay, these service delivery parts, that's where the money really is because you can outsource it, but it's really yeah, expensive. Um, so to really get yourself like for a client in a position where you are like <laughs> irreplaceable, you need to get really good uh, results. So the first time I did the ads and I thought like, oh, nope, I don't got the skills. I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, I went just by a lot of courses um went for some coaches and they all did like pretty well good job but <laughs> no one's in near in depth like josh and Irwin. <laughs> that's crazy but um yeah the moment i saw like okay it's like this feedback loop like a client leaves us so why does the client leaves is it because of the results probably <laughs> it's almost almost about results so the feedback loop for me was like, okay, one client left. I didn't get the results I promised. So how can I improve that? And that's where I thought like, okay, I'll keep learning more about the ads. And if I do like, I, of course I can hire a media buyer, but then I'm kind of like avoiding the problem <laughs> and then just, yeah, focusing myself on sales while I actually like running the ads and getting the results. Also, because it's otherwise like, yeah, you're an agency and you help clients, but if you can't deliver the results, yeah, then you actually can also just don't do the business and don't do the work because you're just a scam uh, otherwise. So 
that's for me why I just keep on improving my ads, uh, keep on learning about the ads. Um, yeah, so basically that, that yeah. kind of... Uh, no, 100%, man. I definitely agree with you there. And of course, you know, we all know the, the saying all the gurus for out there, right? Like you need to be working on the business, not in the business, etc. You know, we, we all hear that on YouTube 20 times a day. Um, and yeah, you know, once you get to the point where you have that many clients that it just does not make sense for you to be in the ads manager, then yes, you know, by all means, train up a media buyer to help out with, you know, the fulfillment. But before that, you need to understand how Facebook ads work or how online marketing works because, you know, again, the, the, the same goes for Google ads, for TikTok ads, for Snapchat ads, regardless of your service delivery, you need to understand that yourself before you can get a team to do it. Because the biggest mistake I made was never learning Facebook ads at the start and just going and work and trying to find this cheap media buyer for max you know, $300 a month, knowing that if I can get this media buyer to do it, my profit margin is like 80, 90%. Um, what happens then is, first of all, you don't know who's a good or bad media buyer because they will show you results and you have no idea if those are good or bad or not. And secondly, you know, if the results aren't there, you don't know, you know, what the issue is. Is it that the media buyer is not doing a good job? Is it something else? Is it the store? Is it, like I said, the product market fit? What is what is actually wrong with, you know, that moment? Because um, it could be a lot of things, right? Like the ads could be doing well, but for some reason, there's something on the store that doesn't work. We, um, one of our clients that we've got now is an extremely large dropship store that actually has a million a month in ad spend. Um, they were getting like one purchase for every 225 checkouts, which is insane. So it's like less than like some 99.9% .9 of people that check out. So actually you're ready to fill out their payment info. They don't end up making the purchase. So the ads have got an outbound click through rate percentage of like <clears throat> two or 3%. Everything is going well, everything is cheap. And then you just immediately drop off from the checkout point. Um, and then we actually went in, we went through the flow and we realized the reason why people were not completing their purchase is because it says on the, the shipping times that it can take up to 60 days for them to get their order. And people obviously have Christmas in mind thinking, okay, I'll get this product or I'll get these items in time for Christmas, either for myself or to give to friends and family. But if they know it's going to take 60 days, they're not going to go through with it. And only on the shipping or on the checkout page does it say when the shipping time is. So by changing that, we immediately, you know, the floodgates opened basically. So every person that checked out or almost every person that checked out, you know, ended up making that purchase as soon as we made that change. But if I did not understand how, you know, CRO works, how Shopify works, how Facebook ads work, I would never be able to pinpoint that. And I'll probably just blame my media buyer saying, oh, you're not able to get us the results and then try and find someone else. So understanding what it is that you offer and definitely when starting out running it yourself will, you know, will really enhance, um, you know, your skills, of course, but also your agency's lifetime value. Yeah, you, you really know what's uh, going on in the ad account with your clients. Um, and for me also, it was like, I can do it. If I do it myself, I know the results will be better because I'll be willing to put in the effort because your clients are let, literally your lifeblood or breeding. Like yeah, your business is like a little baby and cash flow is uh, it's, it's oxygen. <laughs> and if yeah, you, uh, yeah, you gotta maintain the oxygen. So doing it yourself, you will learn like every day. And uh, I don't know if everyone here has already clients or not, uh, Josh. Um, the most will have clients or have had clients in the past. Yeah. But yeah, so <laughs> really like keeping a client one month longer can like really make the difference in your agency and also in your own lifestyle. Um, yeah. And, 100%. Run, and running the ads yourself, it's really cost effective because yeah, you've got to pay yourself, but also you're, you're always willing to put in the extra mile to really get the uh, results yeah, there. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, so when starting out, guys, um, or, you know, just on your journey now, if you run the ads, if you've got the time, run the ads yourself because, you know, like, like Rajen just said, it's, 
it's a higher profit margin for you. You know, it's more cash flow for you as well. And you know, you'll be able to improve on a high income skill. And once you know, once you understand online marketing, or once you understand Facebook ads, you know, like they say, you'll never go broke because once you're an expert at that, you can start to build your own stores. You can start to, you know, set up juicy deals where you get a, an equity stake in these businesses or, you know, a, a revenue share, or you can get a percentage of ad spends knowing that, you know, you're able to get those results because, you know, you're that confident in, in your ability to get those results. And that's when you can start making, you know, a lot of money on the back end as well. So, um, yeah, you know, it's one of the best decisions that I've ever made is actually becoming an expert in Facebook ads rather than just trying to outsource it for, you know, as cheap as I possibly can. Anyway, in terms of the, your day to day, because obviously you're doing a lot of things, but if we just look at the agency, how much time do you spend a day on, on the agency on like excluding communication, just on actually like, you know, the systems, the Facebook ads, et cetera. Um, so every day at 9 a.m i just check the ad accounts like going through them all um and that's done in like one hour and yeah then it's just like if you do it every day there's nothing like big changes you need to do but always if you miss like two days where you were doing other things or when i'm going abroad um yeah then the workloads keep stacking up but if i do it every day i'm maybe two, three hours really doing advertising. And yeah, besides that, it's a lot of thinking. <laughs> like, okay, what's the next yeah. thing? What's the next step? Um, also with the coaching and the course, there's a lot of time right now, but I, I would say like three, four hours per day uh, really into the ads. Yeah. So it's crazy, you know, when you think about it, guys, he, you know, 20K a month, two, three hours a day. You know, it, and, and that's, you know, it, like I said, it, it's not, it doesn't have to be difficult. So you don't have to, it, I know that everyone creates that, you know, perception of, oh, you know, you need to be working, um, you know, so many hours a day, you need to be grinding, etc. If you have the right systems in place, if you know what you're doing, then, you know, it doesn't actually have to take as long as you think. Oh, I have almost none, zero, like oh, oh, only <laughs> the night before Black Friday is the only night I went like to 4 a.m. in the morning to get all the campaigns done. Yeah, 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 that's an exception though, man. But but then also the funny part was like on the busiest day of the complete year in my whole agency, I was free because I did everything the night before. So <laughs> yeah. besides that, um, I haven't, yeah been like the the grinding hours for uh, in the in the evening just go to bed early get enough sleep uh, eat healthy work out uh, and just be consistent every day one percent better uh, yeah i love that man good stuff any uh, any questions guys for for a gen feel free to unmute yourself or just uh, put in the chat oh sarah doesn't mute himself Go yeah, for it. Come. <laughs> so you were talking about uh, processes, right? Um, and, and structures. So what is the biggest thing that you changed that actually helped you scale from 2K to 20K within such a short time frame? Yeah, um, I, I invested in people. So I um, came across a guy named Max and he's like, a, yeah, almost like a, almost a business partner. And he's, uh, he was, his thing is sales. And I like sales too. I like talking a lot, but that's also the problem. <laughs> um, and so I got like him abroad, do, let him do the outreach, let him do the uh, loom strategy we had and just letting things <laughs> out of control. And that's for me, yeah, well, your business is your baby. <laughs> so letting someone else do like talking with the clients, uh, doing the outreach part, chasing your changing your tone of voice i try to get him as much talking as as i do but that was one of the biggest game changers i had like okay you will do the outreach i will pay you for that uh i will pay you for the sales uh, otherwise i wouldn't have the sale but i need clients to get better in facebook ads because <laughs> i called myself at one time like a ma machine learning and probably just probably knows this too and caitlin also uh, like if you have a, like a lot of clients, you just see what works and what doesn't work. 
And that's the most beautiful part. Like with one client, it's like hit or miss. <laughs> like you have a small, tiny budget. Uh, but once you get to two clients, it all already start to get really interesting. Like, okay, I can see what works here. Does it work here? A, B test with two clients. And then at a point I got at eight clients and then further to 13 clients and then to 15 clients. And then you can really see and make fast decisions. But I wanted to get to that point. So I had to yeah, let go of some cash flow uh, and put it inside someone who will grow with me. And uh, yeah, so basically I would get someone to do sales if you don't like the ads or get someone to do the ads if you don't like ads. <laughs> so yeah yeah i know what you mean yeah fair enough yeah that's interesting so it's funny because we just spoke about not giving it out of hands right away and outsourcing it for cheap and cheerful and then now we're saying actually find team members but it's very important that you guys understand there's a difference between those two because regen is talking about investing into quality rather than just some guy off fiber or some guy off upward yeah, because, yeah, it's expensive. So yeah, yeah. Um, if, if you can find the right person to help your agency, it's like cloning yourself. So there's there's two regents or there's two stairs working on the agency at the same time. Um, and once you get to that point, like with me and Elliot, <laughs> I I also me. try to uh, duplicate myself. It's something I wouldn't suggest. <laughs> no, for real. Um, I had this vision like, okay, I will be having someone who uh, supports me with the ads and I will let someone do the sales and then I'll be like the captain sailing this business. That was my vision. But the thing I was doing was someone who doesn't understand a thing of Facebook ads. I was teaching him everything I know. But the main problem with that structure, uh, like student of a master teacher, uh, teacher student uh, relation is like, it takes like a lot of time become, before the student becomes better than the teacher. So the results weren't getting better, even though I had someone training because you will always think like how I did because I taught him how I think and how I would do things. So I tried to, <laughs> to, do, to duplicate myself. Uh, I'm still having him on board uh, because it's really nice to have someone uh, yeah, like sometimes swing by to help and understand, but um, support, I mean. But yeah, I really su would suggest to get dig in the mud, get in the trenches, do the outreach yourself first, get to know like, okay, what was what is working for me? What is working for the business? Uh, do the ads yourself, see uh, how you can improve it and getting better at it. And then uh, I would really recommend to yeah, invest in people in your team. Like it will take like a lot of time of your uh, shoulders. It will cost you something, but the benefit of more time to invest in your agency is definitely worth it. Yeah, 100%. Man. And yeah, I meant like duplicating, like work ethic wise, not physically duplicating. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, um, I now Bradley and I laugh about it, but back then, that was the big issue that we had. We are both the same person and personality. We are both introverted. We both like systems and processes, but we're not big on sales and outreach. So basically we had two people on the back end, no one on the front end. And it was just, it was frustrating because, you know, it, it just wasn't this, this well-oiled machine. Um, and now, you know, we've both gone on and done our own things. And, you know, we're, we've, we've gone on and been more successful than we would have been if we would have stayed together. Um, so yeah, definitely look at your own personality type, you know, and your strengths and then find someone that complements that. So again, with me and Elliot, Elliot's sales minded, extroverted, you know, he, he likes to, um, you know, be on the front end, whereas I'm not, I'm not like that. I'm introverted. I like systems and processes. I like to be on the back end. The days where I get the most energy are the days when the calendar is empty and I can think and I can map out things and systems. Um, and Elliot's, you know, is, is the opposite. He likes the full calendar. He likes to be, you know, active. Um, and, you know, he can't stay in, in the house, you know, just behind the computer for too long because he, he'll get, he'll get, you know, twitchy and he, he'll want to change the scenery. So, um, yeah, definitely invest into good people, guys. Once it makes sense, right? Like, yeah. don't, you, don't you'll stop. know. <laughs> yeah, you'll know. You'll feel yeah. it like it's, it's like this feeling like, okay, 
what am I going to do with my time? Am I keep doing the same stuff and investing my time? I uh, like I was doing looms and outreach and sales calls. And at one moment I thought like, well, if I want to get better at ads and get more clients, I need to yeah get more time. <laughs> and that was the moment for me. I like, okay, I need to find myself a sales rep. Um, and that was the best decision I made uh, this year. <laughs> Yeah, good stuff, man. How did you find the sales rep? I yeah, so a lot of people are... uh, actually actually via via LinkedIn. So he contacted me because he wanted someone for the ads, and I contacted him because I want something for someone from the sales. But then we end up actually talking right past each other because we wanted the same thing. Yeah, we yeah, both yeah. had an agency, so for two three months we like almost all, like had a little bit of contact, but not uh working together and then after three months he was working with another agency and i was like damn i should have asked him to work for me and so it was like a funny thing because when uh the moment i asked max like hey do you want to work with me he said yeah why didn't you ask sooner so that was <laughs> so but in the end we uh yeah we came together worked together but via linkedin it was i was sharing a lot of videos about facebook ads about agency life um just putting a lot of value out there and yep. the the linkedin algorithm works like yeah <laughs> fucking great <laughs> because every time someone puts a thump on it or interesting you'll be popping up in someone else's feed and that effect will just keep going like a snowball yeah no definitely man good stuff um oh, i just lost my train of thought there was something i was going to ask then completely forgot about it um, any any questions, guys, for for Jen while I gather my thoughts again? Like I said, you can also uh, put in the chat. Pop in again. <laughs> Go on, Sarah. Yeah, so you just said uh, LinkedIn, right? Because no, literally, no one talks about LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So why LinkedIn? How do you actually utilize it for yourself? Well, I, I, precisely why you say it. Like no one is talking about LinkedIn, um, and LinkedIn is like. Uh, social media, Instagram, we got all those flu flus, I call them the influencer, the lifestyle, the bloggers, the, uh, I make videos. Uh, currently, Instagram is like this TikTok place. Um, also, TikTok is really nice to get a uh, following right now. It's I'm planning on 2020 or 2022 to really get the ball rolling on TikTok because just like an instant, you can get 10K views. Like, it's amazing. Um but LinkedIn is, yeah, all the business people are on LinkedIn. So those people, you really want to, yeah, get your, um, yeah, your face, your, like your surface be front of their eyes because they are running a business. They are probably running a store. They maybe know someone who does. So at the moment they like your post, you'll be popping up in their feed and you'll be seen by like a lot of other entrepreneurs or like just people who are in business. Uh, likewise for Facebook, Facebook is like this complete mess. The algorithm is messy and no one understands it. Um, Instagram, really, you get three hours and it makes or breaks your post. Yeah. If it doesn't get enough engagement, it's dead. And there, all, there you go, all your time, your video skills, etc. Uh, While well, by LinkedIn, your posts can like live on for weeks. And that's fucking sick because you can make one post. And if it goes a little bit viral or just a lot of people engage with it, you get a scene by a lot of people. So I went just like full <laughs> on LinkedIn. I got a lot of clients from there um, because no one was doing it. And still nobody is doing it. Yeah. Like. I can watch in my LinkedIn and all I see is like recruiters looking for people. <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. But, but still, it's if for probably also in the Netherlands, um, it's like LinkedIn is the, the place to be to get in contact with uh, people who are in business or just uh, what more kind of serious. Like yeah. Instagram is funny and like show your best self. And LinkedIn is just, yeah, tell me what you're doing in business and maybe I'll connect with you and talk more about business and maybe we'll partner together. Yeah. Me, as soon as you said the Netherlands, I realized what I was going to ask then. Because obviously, I, or at least I, I think all your clients are in the Netherlands, right? Yeah, one's from Belgium. 
same thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how, so how is that? Because that's um, obviously, you know, those that are watching now obviously know that none of my clients are in the Netherlands. I had one client in the Netherlands for a while, uh, but 99% of my clients are all US based. So how has that been for you? You know, just getting Dutch clients, what's, what's different for you than, uh, you know, foreign clients and so on and so forth? Yeah. Uh, Serdar, did I ask, uh, answer your question or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. All yeah, right. thanks. Um, yeah, so basically all Dutch clients, uh, I like it because I just can be myself and have almost always young clients, some older ones. But uh, yeah, the, 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 the ethics of Dutch people are like really stubborn and uh, yeah, how you call it? Nuchter, luchtig. Uh, just, yeah, in, in the Netherlands, earth. like sober, so <laughs> realistic. Uh, yeah. it, it's difficult to... I wouldn't necessarily say scam, but like in in for US based clients, it's, you know the US is a very masculine culture, right? So if you say to them, listen, like if we do X, Y, and Z, you will beat the competition. You'll be better than the rest. Your ads will be in front of the competitors, uh, customers, and so on and so forth. And they will play into that. They will love that. Whereas in the Netherlands, it's like okay, well, first we'll see, then we'll believe. Yeah, and they always say like, yeah, once it's going well, we we'll can put more money into the ads, but that's the biggest lie they always tell me. Like, if it goes well, I can put more money in it. But yeah, the, yeah, the analysis has been great. Like, I have a lot of clients, a lot of potential here also, because uh, I don't think the most people here in the Netherlands who do outreach are just going with generic messages, generic um outreach strategies um and i went like full personal so every mail was personal um i was just checking them out on linkedin checking them out on their website and just get them those uh, icebreakers um to uh, yeah, start a conversation so i got a lot of clients really quick also and still um currently i'm getting a lot of referrals but there's also a big but and that's the fees are just terribly low because we, yeah, we think like 1K per month is like a lot surface, uh, surface fee wise, but also ad spend wise. I'm having a client and I'm doing like uh, 350,000 per year. And I wanted to have like 1K <laughs> on ad spend for Pinterest because Facebook and Instagram were doing well. And he was just like, whoa, Rajan, that's really a lot can we maybe uh, split it into two months? And I was like, man, you're doing almost a half a million and you're <laughs> about 500 to 1,000 euros. You're just getting, um, yeah, getting, <laughs> getting annoying. <laughs> so I want to spend and the Netherlands people here are just like really, really careful and safe with their money and thinking everything through. And uh, so, yeah, tough market <laughs> yeah so uh 2022 i've already made all the new plans for next year so i'm going full on the us and canada uh to get bigger fees uh, bigger ad spends so also there are only 11 people uh, 11 million people on facebook and instagram in the netherlands and that's like yeah. not a lot it makes it really hard to scale some clients they're also not really big clients um, like a Gymshark or like a MyProtein or doesn't matter which brand, but or they are always take and have in-house like uh, an intern doing the ads yeah. or uh, you can't really get in contact with them because there are so little big companies here in the Netherlands. So yeah. it's really hard to scale. Yeah, man. Grimas, how is the market in Germany? Anyone who has a client from this side? Personally, no. Anyone else here, guys, that had a client in nope. Germany? Yeah, I have a client that does sell in Germany, <clears throat> like e-commerce. Yeah. And was it like specific to Germany or was it just Europe and also Germany? No, like, like they have uh, a Dutch website and the same website in German, actually. And the, the ads are in German, so I have to translate everything as well. And Germany is actually going... like. The results are nuts over there. 
but that's like this, this for the web show, like for the e-commerce store owner. Yeah. Uh, clients wise, I wouldn't know. Yeah. Results wise, it's great. Yeah. Germany is like, I think like culture wise, at least like for, an, from an e-com point of view, if, if you get, if you have a client that does shipping in Europe or international shipping or anything like that, and it works in the Netherlands and Belgium, usually it will also work in Germany and Switzerland as well. Obviously, you will need to make some tweaks, some changes, based on obviously being the language. But I feel like culture-wise, there are a lot of similarities. And you know, like I said, with a few small tweaks, you can get it to work in Germany as well, which is obviously a much bigger country with you know, um, a much larger population. So that gives you a lot more scope for scale uh, with your ads as well. But uh, Kareem, I don't think anyone here has actually had a client in, uh, in Germany specifically. Anyway, um, any other questions for Regen guys? Well, if no one has a question, I'll go again then. Joel, did you have a question? Or are you just stretching? Just stretching. No, I've, got a, I've got a question for you, mate. Go yeah. for it. Nice to meet you, Regen. Nice to so meet I just you. want to know how you're actually structuring the deals at the moment. Are you mostly on a flat fee or are you doing like flat fleet fee plus performance? Just interested to see how that pans out the number of clients you're at now. Yeah. So uh, good question. And funny uh, enough, uh, Joshua and I had like two days ago or Friday. Yeah. Last Friday, Friday we had a call for, um, yeah, about like how can I scale it even further? And basically the main point for me also is like, I need to get those backend deals at the first deal immediately. <laughs> so it's uh, set in stone. And right now it's not set in stone. So I had this crazy peaks uh, for my clients with results in Black Friday and holiday sale coming up, but mm -hmm. I don't see anything of it. So the flat fee um, is still nice, a flat fee, but because I was so focused on getting a high flat fee, I forgot about like putting in uh, a nice backend deal. So for now, I already had my sales rep uh, in the call with me. So basically all my deals are still flat fee and I have one store wh where I get like 20% of the conversion value in the store. So that's actually my third business then. Um, yeah, that's one fifth. Um, but yeah, I'm really going after the 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 ROAS deals or the performance deals <clears throat> backed up by a flat fee per month. Yeah. Yeah. Cool, man. Thanks for, thanks for sharing that. I, I, I see when you, when you're at that point with so many clients, it makes sense to have those back end deals in place because you can kind of scale without scaling. Then you're scaling off performance, aren't you? Instead of saying, I will go to 30 clients, you just, yeah. you know, you can just uh, scale on results, I, I guess. Yeah, exactly. And that's the, the thing where it went wrong for me also, where I hit a wall right now is like, I don't want any more clients. Like it's, it's yeah. busy enough, like, <laughs> like another 1k per month doesn't really do the trick anymore. And that's not like cocky or arrogant, but like more, of, I have more, to, I like my free time. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> is it really worth going all the calls every week, uh, doing all the work extra, uh, instead of when I had like a backend deal and maybe a little bit of lower flat fee because I'm currently asking like 1500 euros per month as a fee. So if I, yeah, screw it down to like 1K or 120, 25, I probably could get like a two or 10% uh, performance fee extra. And maybe in the cold month, like January, February, March, net nothing, but then summer sales and the October sales and December sales, then I would really be the, yeah, the love and third. Uh, yeah. Yeah, no, definitely, man. Because obviously, you know, it's not something that we very much discuss in this group, but with, with console techs, you know, we, 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 this is basically, you know, an ongoing topic. And you know, let's say hypothetically speaking, you do have aspirations to scale your agency to a million a year. You know, that's 83K a month. How are you going to get that? How are you, you know, how can we reverse engineer 83K a month, um, you know, to, to, with your agency? Now, if you just have flat fees of, let's say, a thousand a month, that means you need to manage 83 clients, which is obviously 
you know, uh, it's, it's going to be a headache. Even if the clients are all in the same niche, you know, it's going to be difficult. Now, even if you double your fee, so, you know, you're charging 2K rather than 1K, still that's 40 odd clients. You know, it, it's it's very, very difficult. So the easy way, I say easy, you know, the, the less complicated way um, to scale up to that point is with back-end deals. Quick example, you know, if let's say hypothetically speaking, you have a few large e-com stores um, and you charge 10% of ad spend and they do, let's say 800K in spend and you can invoice 80K, you know, if, if you can do that consistently, you know, you've got seven, you know, a seven figure business of one client. So obviously that is going to be an absolute unicorn of a client, but they are out there, especially in the US. You know, there are, see, there's, there are even dropship stores that do you know those numbers in sales? You know it, it's not an, it's not unheard of. So you just need to set those back end deals in place if you you know you're at that point where you do actually want to scale further. Um, or even like my Jen said, set them in stone for 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 the future. So one thing that Elliot's very good with uh, with these sales calls, if the client is a little bit on the smaller side where 1500 a month is the absolute max we can get from them because otherwise, again, like what Regen said, it's hard to get that return on investment because they can't afford to spend more on the ad spend. Um, then what Elliot will do is he'll say, okay, then let's do, for example, a thousand a month retainer, keep the rest of your budget for the ad spend. And then in 90 days from now, um, you know, if we maintain a certain ROAS, then we start with the rev share. So then basically that'll give you a 90 day runway to you know put everything in place for that rev share. And then from that point, um, you know, you can start to get that back end deal that is set in stone 90 days prior to that. Um, so things like that are quite easily you know done because on those sales calls, they're thinking, okay, well, that rev share is only going to take place if the results are there. If not, then you know there is no rev share. So you're basically creating a win-win situation, but you're also setting yourself up for a larger, uh, larger fee from that client, even at a time when you know when, when you're starting out, it doesn't necessarily make sense for them. Anyone else here, guys, that has a um, back-end deal in play? Obviously, uh, Caitlin, I know you uh, you have some juicy structures, but other than that, any, anyone else with back-end deals? in place feel free to use the chat as well if you guys are muted well, i've done them i've done them before but never successfully because the ref share, ref share deals i did were usually with the people who couldn't afford me at all so we did a high ref share but then the results also weren't coming in because they didn't have product market fit their funnel wasn't working uh they were afraid of spending money so those kind of yeah. clients, I do have, I did have one um, client until this month, actually. Uh, the, the one from the screenshots I, I showed you uh, last week somewhere, right? Um, so they couldn't get higher than 2.9 ROAS. And we struck a deal um, that we could get 25% of everything above 2.9 ROAS which we did a lot, but then they quit after one month. But, <laughs> but, <laughs> but we did really good numbers with them, yeah. Yeah, well, that comes down to that, the, the, the ideal client, right? Yeah. Like, don't, don't just set up a back-end deal because they can't afford the retainer. You know, just make sure that the client is actually, you know, a good fit for your business, can afford your business, yeah. uh, and basically have that back-end deal as a bonus. Yeah. The one thing that um, Rich Oakey, um, who's been on these calls as well, always mentions is he always brushes off the retainer as like, oh, that's just to cover our costs. And then he basically focuses on that back end deal. Bear in mind that that retainer that he's got is 2K a month. You know, it's still a good retainer. But the way he structures his whole sales call is like, yeah, yeah, we charge 2K USD a month. That just covers our costs, keeps the staff happy. And then, you know, the back end deal is what we're both doing it for. Because again, the back end deal is when they're making profit as well, right? So they want, uh, in this case, Rachel, they want us to get that deal as much, you know, as we do. 
because they know it only comes into play when you hit certain numbers or when you know a certain profit is made. So um, yeah, don't don't just get the back end deal. <laughs> Uh, oh, because uh, they can't afford your retainer. I uh, I feel you said I've done six of these deals, uh, and five were completely trash. And yeah. as you say, they couldn't afford your service at the beginning. So there, that's why you went for like a high uh, percentage of the the ROAS or the profit per. I have done it all: profit per uh, sold goods, uh, profit yeah. of the goods, and. Um, per sold item so i got like this volume uh, discount no <laughs> like you really should get focused just on like okay is this client a good fit like josh said and then uh try to get the deal with it with the service fee and otherwise it it are always the people who aren't willing to pay you <laughs> who can't pay you and are hoping for a miracle to happen like they don't want to put any money in. And if it flops, it, it doesn't matter for them because, yeah, well, we tried. It uh, doesn't cost me anything. Yeah. Um, so keep far away of those kind of clients. <laughs> it's yeah, a red I've, flag. I've had a shitload of those as well. Man. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, crazy. I've, I've, I've wasted a lot of time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. Same here. I've had, I've had my same uh, you know, past experiences with clients like that. But it's, it's also a learning care for us all, right? You know, it's... Once, once you've had a, a shit client like that where they promise you the world on a back-end deal that never actually comes into play or, you know, it's just impossible to achieve, then you know for future references. Like where Jen said, it's that feedback loop. Every time a client leaves, you know, why did that client leave? What can you improve on your end to ensure that that either doesn't happen or, you know, that that um, is, is prevented or, you know, it, it's restructured in such a way. And it can also be... Uh, Oh, sorry, Regen, go on. Yeah, I even got a client who left because my monthly reporters, <laughs> my monthly reports were looking like a high school uh, <laughs> assignment. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Oh. And <laughs> no, I really, I really, we got great results, but he left when I sent him my report and he was like, what the fuck is this? There isn't a uh, page numbering. I can't see your logo. It's like, it's done by some clients just like knowing like, okay, Regen, there went 10 K into the ad manager and hundred K yeah. came out, but some people really wanted the nice shiny papers and etc. So, all right. Okay. Crazy, man. For me, the feedback loop was, well, he has a point. It's like really unprofessional for me to just hand it over in like a Google docs and then like be, here you go. <laughs> and that was a nice month. Ciao. So right now we have like invested in Watergraph uh, to make the monthly reports and all my clients absolutely love it. They, uh, I've seen how other agencies done it, like uh, a big one here in the Netherlands, traffic leaders. Yeah. I've them. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I have, I've, <laughs> I've, uh, how do you say it? Kidnapped one of their clients. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, and I looked at their reports and I sent them mine and they were just like, why didn't they send me this? They are so big and they can't even afford like these nice reports. So for me, the feedback loop of that also was like, they left because I did a terrible job at my monthly report, like such a little thing. If you look at the whole month of uh, advertising, yeah. but all my clients always keeping uh, at the end of the month, like, hey, Regen, uh, where are the monthly reports? I want to get them uh, back to back so I can uh, see what's going on inside my business. So it, the feedback loop is awesome, but you need to, yeah, to dare to see yourself like, okay, what went wrong and be honest with yourself, what went truly wrong and uh, make adjustments, uh, adjustments according. Um, yeah, no, definitely, man. Um... Also, guys, just, just before we uh, continue, you can also look into, for anyone here on this call that wants to do some kind of reporting, Google Data Studio or Databox. What you can do is you can actually extract data from the ads manager and basically have, like I said, Excel create reports for you in real time. Um, and there's also integrations. I think it's Data Studio where you can actually integrate that with Slack. So for those of you that are actually using Slack, you can actually create a, a data box. So it'll basically just have like ROAS, um, amount spent, page conversion value, et cetera, like the metrics that they want to see in a nice graph. 
uh, pulled through the ads manager in real time and then pins to the top of every single Slack channel with their clients. Um, and that way you can prevent um, them from not knowing what's going on, but it'll also prevent them from asking you tedious questions like, oh, what was the ad spend this week and stuff like that, because they can see it in Data Studio. But um, yeah, reporting, it, it, I, in my opinion, falls on the communication, right? Like communication is key. You need to have the communication on point. Um, again, mistakes that I've made in the past is not sending reports, um, not communicating with the client, not enabling the client to book calls with us, et cetera. Um, and now we have a dedicated client updates call link. We send them weekly Loom updates. Um, and even though not much happens in that week, it's just that touch point. It's just so they can see, okay, there's so much we spent this week. These are the changes. This is what we're working on. It's a little two minute, three minute video. It's not special, but it keeps them in the loop, keeps them, you know, understanding what, every, you know, everything that's going on. And it also puts everything into context, right? If you're doing a lot of testing, then of course the return on ad spend in the short term is going to suffer. And if they just, from one moment to the next, go into the ads manager and they select, I don't know, last seven days, and they see the row as like 1.2, when, you know, previously it was like 2.4, 2.5, something like that, they're going to panic. And they're going to send you an email and say, we want to hop on a call, we want to know what's going on. But if you're consistently sending them updates or you're, you've got a consistent line of communication with these clients, then they know, oh, you know, they're just doing the testing. It will be okay at the end of the month. You know, we'll see the results of the testing or, you know, it's an investment into data into the future. So keeping the clients in the loop um, will prolong that lifetime value of a client because, you know, at the end of the day, it's just relationship building, right? Like if, if they trust you and you trust them, you'll notice that you'll keep these clients for longer. I'm actually in the process of uh, writing Christmas cards for my clients and I've just got this list of all their addresses, et cetera. So I don't need to manually find all these addresses from last year. And it's funny because a lot of the clients that I'm writing Christmas cards for now are clients that I had last Christmas as well. So that's how long um, I've actually had these clients. And like I said, it's just because of that communication. I've never had, uh, like my lifetime value of a client now has never been as long as it is, you know, as they are today. Uh, because previously I didn't do all of this. I didn't go the extra mile for clients. I didn't, you know, focus on that relationship aspect of the client. It was like, okay, get the retainer, you know, basically minimize communication as much as possibly can. And um, you're basically you're focused on the money. Whereas now we're focused on the results. We're focused on the longevity of the relationship. And I would much rather keep a client for 10 months and not sign another client in that 10 month period then having to go out every single month to find a new client again because the clients that I've got all unhappy. Um, Sarah says you've got to deal with a wasp. <laughs> okay, that's random, man. <laughs> um, any questions for Regen guys or just in general agency life? Um, feel free to speak. Let's say Ayman uh, Ayman said just going back to the social stuff. How do you go about content to put out in terms of value and where do you get the inspiration from? Uh, for what to put that will help you and your brand stand out from the crowd. Oh, you just got to copy uh, Joshua. <laughs> <laughs> I am, um, guys, a very, very um, useful source is um, what, uh, let me actually, Stacked Marketer newsletter. I'll, uh, I'll put in the chat. What Stacked Marketer will do is they will give you a newsletter each workday, 12 p.m., um uk time 1 p.m dutch time i think and they'll just give you five bullet points of what's going on in the industry so google facebook tiktok you know whatever's big in the industry they'll just give you bullet points and a url you know if you want to know more and that's where i get a lot of information from um that you can then also repost on socials or you know share within the communities etc and i like what jen said as well once you have a lot of clients you can already see what's happening in the industry based on you know what's happening in the ad, ad accounts. You know, so if you know, for example, oh, I don't know, um, uh, CPMs are high on one client, and then you go to the other accounts and you notice CPMs are high on all the accounts, and then you know, okay, something is going on. And then you know, if you start googling it, why are the CPMs high, you'll find an article where I don't know, maybe there's there's there's, there's politics going on and a lot of politicians are investing into ad attention, then you know, okay, something's happening in the industry. And then you can report about that on you know, your own agency socials. And then, you know, 
that way you can you can provide value because then people that are following you know okay something's going on that's why cpms are high so you know it doesn't mean that our ads are bad it just it's something's going on in the industry so um having a lot of clients that does help you know to stay ahead of the curve but the newsletter stack market is, is very very useful as well so um you know feel free to check that out it's free there's no affiliate link attached to that so uh yeah check that out so uh Ivan, for um like content ids i would also recommend just like what are questions or problems your clients or potential clients are struggling with and then just make videos or content posts about that how you can solve those uh problems the the main issue people always think is that we give all our secret sauce away but People are fucking lazy. 90% of the people who all read your post or see it won't take action. And the 10% who does read it will probably do it themselves and then find out they can't do it themselves or it flopped or it didn't work. And there's always a percentage of people who think like, hey, he's smart. Let's contact him and let him do the work. So just go inside of your client's head, like, okay, what are problems here? iOS 13, iOS 15, uh, 15 right now. Um, so IS 13, Mocha, IS 14. <laughs> I was 14 and 15. Yeah, man. I was 15, so, right? With the, yeah, it's 15, so 15s. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, with the, with the emails. So yeah, yeah. Uh, so those are all things where you can help on tools like what Josh sent. Also, um, YouTube is really great, great place to just see what's uh, like hot of videos. Just type in some. Uh, generic keywords and you will always see what's popping up on the top pages um, so there's where you can get like inspiration just follow some like big uh, influencers in the market uh, because they are always posting uh, things online uh, about what's going on inside the market and be a little creative you if you want to stand out as a brand you need to get your own tone of voice your own way of doing things and just just you can copy and like see things what other people are doing but you need to give it your own sauce so don't re really like only change the colors but you change the voice uh and make it sound like you yeah i agree man and for those of you that are spending i think it's 10k um or more on ads um through your business manager you can actually apply for facebook business partnership um, they've actually just announced that the restructuring is like, I think now the lowest tier is called member. And then the tier after that is actually partner. But uh, regardless, you know, if you spend more than 10K in your business manager, you can apply for that partnership and they will send you news updates as well. So Facebook will every so often will send you an update of what's going on and what are changing. Um, and then what the more you spend, the more they'll send you. So they'll, you know, they'll invite you to webinars where they will keep you updated. Um, you know, they will allow you to book calls with them so they can explain more. Uh, for example, I just got an invite to uh, have a more in-depth uh, explanation of, uh, you know, the the, the, um, the server-based, what is it, CAPI, um, you know, so stuff like that. So once you... Conversion, uh, yeah. Conversion API, that's it, yeah. yeah. I, just <laughs> I, I, I had KPI in my mind, I just couldn't get, get the way that but um yeah so once you have that spend and like i said you know once you have a few clients only your business manager it's actually not that hard to get 10k in spend so it doesn't have to be you spending it if you've got a client that's already got more than 10k in spend in the ads manager if you get partner access to their business manager that spend goes onto your business manager as well and then once you have that you know you they, they, they can't take you off of it so if you if you have a client where more than 10k spend apply for that partnership and then you've got it for life until you get your business managers taken down but obviously you know we're uh hoping that no one has that said on reason yeah what's it called you said so like i said they've literally just changed it but if you type in um facebook partner program or partner directory um oh it's actually now called meta I, I'll, I'll link you in the chat cool doesn't matter if I'm on my girlfriend's Facebook. No, so your business manager yeah. um, needs to have 10K in spend. I can't remember if it's in 180 days or total. But oh, once you have that, you can apply 
for, um, like I said, it used to be called Facebook Partner, um, Facebook Partner Directory. I think now that you're yeah. changing the name to member something. Um, but yeah, yeah check it out fun. and they'll provide you with a lot of information about the industry as well. Sweet, man. Thanks. Awesome. Any other questions, guys, before we um, wrap up? I got one quick one, actually, before we leave, if you don't oh, mind. <laughs> you said something about um, um, icebreakers and stuff for emails, right? So personal lines. Yep. Are you writing yourself or do you have like uh, someone like outs outsource it? Um, well, at first I, I, I did everything myself. Uh, mm -hmm. Right now I have just like uh, Max and Artu who are doing the looms and the outreach. So um, yeah, we, we like one thing we do and what really works well. Um, yeah, I'm just going to give it away. Uh, do as, a, as if you are a customer. So like... It works every time, <laughs> but you need to be like creative. Like everyone says like, Hey, I'm doing Facebook ads. Hey, I'm doing this. Hey, can I help you? Uh, so they are always already getting bombarded with those kind of emails, but the emails they always reply to as a web shop owner, you are almost obligated to e at least open it. Mm -hmm. It's like, if it's a question of a customer. So we are using like phrases that are, potential customers doing if they want to shop something for them or for my girlfriend that I don't have like we, we just make it up but that's or like or biggest icebreakers what always works because you don't position yourself as the magically guru who will scale their web shop but as a potential customer who sees some errors in their web shop and wants to make a video with free tips sick okay <laughs> Yeah, man. So, so, anyway, so yeah, it, it takes more time. It's less scalable, but the yeah. reply rates are re way higher than just generic ones. Yeah. yeah. Just that though, email uh, blast. Oh, sorry. No, go go for it, man. What? No, I did email blast. Like I, I just scraped leads from LinkedIn and from Sales Navigator and Deal Seven Lead Finder, whatever, and then I just started blasting emails like crazy and then I just the only response I got was we're no business fuck off basically <laughs> so, I'm gonna, so I'm gonna go the more personalized way now so it, I just it, I, to, I to be honest personalized uh, lines yeah to be honest uh we have never did one single email blast never really um and we have like if, if I would like sum it all what we have called outreach called email outreach it's it's crazy I also haven't run a single ad for my agency in these past, uh, yeah, almost 1.5 years now, almost two. I haven't like spent a dime on <laughs> getting clients that way. So it's all called outreach with emails and just personalize it because people aren't yeah. like robots. So we don't like the, the person who reads your email is just a person. So and as I always say, also in sales, it's people to fucking people. And business to business doesn't exist. Business to consumer doesn't exist. It's always people to people. So your email will also be read by a people, by a person. So like you got to be in the head of that person. And that's why if you just take the extra effort or personalizing your emails, I bet from 10 emails you'll send, you'll get four or five replies instead of when you send 100 or 1,000 and you get one or 10 replies. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so personalize. That's, that's the main tip I can give you because for us, it's been doing great because everyone else is doing like, oh, we need to get a, as a lot as uh, a lot of uh, emails as possible out to the door. We got to bless those things out. And I know like Josh always like also, uh, has a different approach on personalizing the blast emails that always works also works but for me just every email is personal and that that's just people know it's personal because there's time and effort in it and then they'll be like obligated or they feel obliged to respond so yeah. just a quick uh, yeah. sign up with regards to the uh the, the creating the impression that you're a customer just make sure that if you do go that route, which obviously um, you know we do as well, 
make sure it makes sense why you're asking the question. So one of one of the ways that we used to reach out on Instagram was, hey, do you ship internationally? Just a random question because it creates the impression that you know you want to know if if they can ship the products to you. And then the next question was, okay, cool, do you run Facebook ads? And it's like it, it doesn't match up with the with the <laughs> conversation. So what we noticed was the literally the response rate on that first question was like 60, 70 percent, maybe even higher. And then once we asked, okay, do you do Facebook ads? It would drop right down. And a lot of people just read it and not respond. Um, so just make sure that you know the conversations line up. Uh, because you know it's great getting that initial response and it, it does get you foot in the door, but you know there's no point in doing it if the next question is then ignored. So either have like another question in between, so it makes sense why you're asking for the Facebook ads, or go for you know a less uh, a more open question. So hey guys, got a quick question about your brand, something like that leaves it completely open for interpretation. They can still think you're a customer. Um, and they won't get pissed off or they won't blank you if, um, you know, you then ask for the Facebook ad stuff. Um, Eamon, Eamon says, how do you approach your outreach at this time of the year when people are a little more reluctant to consider your offer? Oh, okay. That's a good question. May so I, yeah. <laughs> I'm actually, uh, we're just building for the future, to be fair. Um, we know not a lot is going to happen in December. So, you know, we're basically getting stuff in place now for January. So, um, you know, any, any calls that we can get now, obviously, are a bonus. But um, like I said, we're just restructuring our outreach to almost uh, anticipate that they're not going to, you know, they're not going to say yes right now. So a bit more of a value upfront approach, a bit more, hey, you know, maybe we can work together in the New Year's, et cetera. Because if you say, Let, let's, let's get something done now, let's, let's hop on a call today, let's get this deal in place, Chances are they'll probably say, guys, just 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 reach back out, you know, in January. But if you just say, hey, listen, you know, let's let's get to know each other now and uh, see if there's an opportunity to wait together in the new year, they'll be more open to that. It'll be more casual, and um, you know, you'll basically get your foot in the door before all the other agencies do uh, when January comes. Yeah. So what what I can give you all uh, as a tip, like. Uh, what I always say is that you're planting seeds. Every time you talk to a business owner, you're planting a seed and you just got to, you water it. <laughs> so it can get a big plant or a big tree uh, before you can get apples in a surf's feet. So that's the, the metaphor, but <laughs> so you know. Um, but understand that like um, the problem, if you prospect a client, you probably see something that's going wrong. Like you can help them. And if you're being just like honest, like, okay, well, I'm just giving out a lot of value. I will be helping them first. Uh, and don't expect a thing about it and just planting seeds. Then even in December, I closed yet last year, closed three clients where I didn't expect it. And still I closed today a client, uh, probably two um it's december so i'm just doing the outreach still and just planting seeds just don't be the pushy sales guy who wants a call but just give value give three times the value and don't expect anything out of it and plant seeds and then in january or february when people are uh not so reluctant anymore for your offer then they'll know like oh he was the guy who gave me just a value video or just gave me tips about how I can improve my website or uh, store or Facebook ads, etc. And they'll think about you instead of the competition. So just never expect anything about uh, your outreach or your sales or always be like, okay, I'm going to help someone and that will always get a bigger and a better return in the end. And maybe not today or tomorrow or next month, but maybe over a half year. I have clients getting from like last year from my LinkedIn videos who are coming right now. Like, hey, I saw your video back then. I have a store. Can you help me scale it? Of course. <laughs> 100 man. You're With a year by. So. You've got that top of mind awareness because you're putting that value uh, up front. Yeah. They've yeah. seen you. They know you. Uh, and you wasn't the guy who were trying to get the sale if you want the sale you you never need to want to sell <laughs> that's yeah. when you fail like if you want the sale you fail so 100 percent. it's like um what brandon said um uh, it's it's uh, he, he mentioned it for sales calls 
he basically said, you know, if you get frustrated by a no-show, you just that means you haven't got enough calls booked because you're putting all your eggs, you know, in that one call. Um, and the same goes for outreach, right? Like if you get frustrated by a rejection, frustrated by someone saying no or saying that he's not interested, chances are you're probably just not reaching out to enough people. You know, you need to be uh, building those relationships, reaching out to people, getting calls booked in such a scale that if someone doesn't show up, it's their loss, not yours. On to the next one. Yep. Cool. Any questions before we wrap up? Said or not more anymore. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I, feel, I need to say that right away. <laughs> no? All good, guys. Awesome. Um, two quick tips from me before we wrap up. The Christmas card idea, it really does work. It's a quick little hack. I already know it. <laughs> um, guys, for those in the Netherlands, hey, man, two euros. It's like, you know, it's like the pound shop in the UK. It's, it's literally, you know, it's just a little cheap shop. And um, that could potentially prolong the lifetime value of a, of, a, of a client, right? Like, it's something that not everyone does. And I, I, I specifically write them by hand as well. I don't, uh, I don't do it, you know, at scale. I don't send them online, nothing like that. I do it by hand on purpose so they can see I'm putting in the effort to go the extra mile. Literally just two sentences, happy Christmas, happy new year, stuff like that. If, it, if that causes a client to stay one month longer, how sick is that ROI? Two euro Christmas yeah, cards, it's maybe insane. an extra 10 euro to get them sent. And then, you know, it, it, you get a thousand or 2000 retainer back out of it. That's all you need to see it, guys. It's, it's... And, and, and it's always in those little things. Yeah, 100%. Uh, those little things who can, what can really make or break like a next month or a second <laughs> month or like a six month. Um, under promise, over deliver. And that's also such a thing, like just send the cards. <laughs> Send them a gift when they are a new client with yours. Yeah. Uh, let them know you, like if they or if they're if it's their birthday, give them something or just <laughs> say happy birthday. Let, let them know. Uh, also with Christmas, just text them. Hey, happy holidays. Hey, happy new year. I've done it for every single uh, holiday, and they always like, oh, how kind of you that you're thinking about me. Um, yeah, understand that relationship building, man. Yeah. And it's stuff like that, like I said, a lot of the agencies will not do that. They will not, because um, it's not business, you know, it's, it's not the way you should be doing it. They are clients, not like that. But if, by doing small things like that, like I said, the clients will stay for longer. Um, and the second thing, um, just to touch on what you mentioned about Jen there, by personalizing the outreach. After this call, guys, just think of a brand or, you know, one or two brands that you'd love to work with or you've never done the outreach for could be your favorite clothing brand, a big brand in the country that you're currently in and then create one personalized message or send them one personalized DM on LinkedIn or Instagram, anything like that, just to try and see how, see how it goes. Um, worst case scenario, you spent 15 minutes crafting an email that doesn't get read and you're big whoop onto the next one, but just go for it. You never know what comes from it. Um, I know Regen is in, in talks with a very, very interesting client from the Netherlands. Um, we just signed quite an interesting client as well that we never expected to actually get in touch with. Um, and it just, like I said, just by just going for it, just, you know, thinking of a client that you'd never even dream of being able to work with. Maybe they've already got the ad set up. Maybe it looks like they can't improve in any way or that you can't add any value to them. Reach out to them anyway, see what they've got to say. If they entertain the email, then you know they're not 100% happy with how it's currently going and you can potentially come in and how great if you could work with one of your favorite brands that actually that you actually know rather than just an unknown brand that you reached out to because you've seen it on my ip.ms <laughs> awesome if there's no um let's see what's in the chat oh i so thanks a lot um yeah thanks for attending guys regen thanks for hopping on as well um i know that your bedtime is nearly here because you get up at 5 a.m. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's always around like 9 to 10 p.m. Uh, but yeah, you got to gotta have a proper night of sleep. It, it helps a lot. And just yeah, really the, the main difference is just putting in, in work every day, just 1% uh, better than yesterday. And that's, that's it, the man. only thing what I've been doing like for the couple months. And 
uh, for me, nothing has changed really much because I'm doing still the same job, same work, same things I did like last year or previous months. Um, but yeah, uh, money wise, it changed a lot. And now I travel and do everything I want. So <laughs> that's nice. <laughs> yeah. Good stuff, man. So um, um, if anyone has a question or you need some help with something like agency lifestyle, hit me up uh, on Instagram at Regen. Um, I would love to help and ask your questions there also. So yeah, I was about to say that I'll, I'll put your Instagram handle in the in the WhatsApp group, so everyone has that as well. But um, yeah, thanks for attending, guys. Any questions, you know where to find us. Like I said, I'll add Regen's uh, Instagram handle to the group as well, so you can reach out to him and uh, have a great. Have a great week, guys. Thanks for asking Thanks, me, guys. Josh. And Bye. talk soon. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.